Hey guys and gals, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you already haven't. Also, make sure you turn on your notifications on your subscription so you see our new content when we post it. Thanks for subscribing. Hi guys, welcome to MTG Dungeon. Thanks for tuning in to our channel. Uh, we wanted to let you know that our local uh, store, our LGS, uh, Play Live Nation is hosting a PPTQ here in Yakima, Washington on September 23rd. The format is modern. Registration is $25. Registration for decks and sign up tournament starts at 11 a.m., then the tournament starts at noon. We hope to see you guys there. Yep. Uh, where can you find us? I say if you want to follow us on Twitter, Twitch, or Instagram, we'll have the links posted down below. down below. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that. And remember to turn on notifications so you see when we post new content. Enjoy the match, guys. Bye. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to MTG Dungeon. Ben here, Warden there. All right, today we have D&T, Don't, <laughs> Death and Taxes, versus Burn. What do you think about this matchup? Uh, well, go, whoever goes first, uh, I think, has a small advantage. Just a small one? Just a small one. A smidge? Uh, this is game one, too. Yeah. As well. As well. Um, like, so if D&T &D can stick like a turn two Thalia, it can really slow down the burn deck. Because at that point, the only one mana removal they have is Lightning Bolt. That they'd have to pay two for. Yes. Um, and if you can just... Oh, well, burn's going first, right. so... Well, let's... that's a, that's a good uh, advantage bar <laughs> percentile <laughs> towards the burn player in turn one Monastery Swift Spear. Yeah. Notice... You know, you might as well play it on turn one. You got yeah. it. Well, I'll say it's, it's, there's, <laughs> what, like, tw uh, 16 turn one plays from the burn deck, I think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you got Rift Bolt, Goblin Guide, Lightning Bolt, Lava Spike, Monastery Swift Spear. So, 18? No, it's... 20 if they run 20, yes. Yeah. All right, so we got Lean and Arbiter. Ooh, it's a pretty which, good one. If unanswered, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, can be very annoying for the burn deck uh -oh. because they run enough fetches. So landing that early is definitely annoying. Well, that and then, I mean they they do run so few land as well that if you can blow up two of their land, then having to top draw more land just makes it way more difficult. Absolutely, for them. and I remember a survey a long time ago. It was a general survey of the most hated things in magic as a player and land destruction i believe is number two only <laughs> to be followed up or beaten by having your spells countered yeah yes, i thought you might like that that's the, that's the best one yes. all right so fetches for a white source so i don't think they run anything uh, Atarkas. Helix, they're, they're Helix. running the Tarkus Command. I was going to say, I don't think there's oh. anything they run main board green, but they do have a Tarkus Command. Yes. This version does, anyway. Most most zoo versions do as well. Mm -hmm. I just, I, the, the green splash main board is for a Tarkus Command at the sideboard that is struck a yep. So since he... That's a big tell, since he didn't go for the green one, went for the Sacred Foundry instead, yep. That that's not going to happen anytime soon. No. And also that, uh, that Eidolon, the Great Rebel... Is uh, huge. Ooh. It's huge. It is huge, uh, but also having a three-three first striker is huge. It is. <laughs> that also helps. Yeah, and he's using my favorite golem token. Isn't there only one golem token? Yeah, it is. No, there's. I think there's non-three-three for golem tokens. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are probably correct. All right. I see a helix. I think this is gonna. Yep. Yeah, that seems fine. Gain one life yep. to do that. I'd be willing to do that every day, all day, every day. So he didn't block, which for to me tells me he probably has like a resto angel in hand, or a or, flicker wisp, or, or he or just the, threw one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, or a flicker wisp. Yeah, got to keep that around, get your value. Yeah. Get in for one because I mean, you, might... you might as well because yeah. you're gonna blink it. Yep. I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, the the DNT player isn't actually too bad right now because Burn is only on two land. Like, you're going to have multiple creatures to block and then having to force them to try and kill you with burn damage at 11 isn't a terrible plan because it's probably like one burn spell a turn, so you got like a four turn clock. Yeah. 
that as the D&T player, your, your plan gets a... Your active plan of this Restoration Angel, as we're seeing, to blink Blaze Splicer for an additional blocker, plays around very wonderfully the Eidolon trigger. Yes. Okay, so Resto comes in, targets the Blaze Splicer. I think he's responding to the target of uh, Restoration Angel. I don't know why he wouldn't just blow, uh, just kill the Blade Splicer so he doesn't get value from it. I think he's deciding how he's going to do it. That's fair, okay. Uh, I mean, luckily the Resto Angel can still block as well. Uh, and it was a prowess trigger from the Swift Spear. So that's a little telling for the, the Death and the DNT hand that he probably has a bunch of spells that are three or less, and so that's why he took the Eidolon out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say I think you just take the prowess one out and force a burn player to take damage from cast their own spells as well to try and get an advantage that way. Uh, looks like a path to exile. So I think you just—I would just hold it up. Same. Oh, so he's gonna ghost quarter. Which is fun. Which is actually a really good play because that I, I takes away the white man. Yeah, I, I so don't, it I, shuts off lightning helix and boros charms. I like it. He's he, also got a follow up. Yeah, I was, I, I was like, I was trying to think if the the zoo deck actually ran like basic planes. No. And so I was like, I that's what I couldn't remember. And I was like, if they don't, it's a really really good play. If they do. You wait, if you have a backup one, you wait for him to get the one plane to blow up that one. Like, okay, now you're just on mono red. Mm -hmm. This is fine. Yep. All right. So I like it. Keep it, keeping the one white mana up for the path in case that monster so spirit decides to get super big. Mm hmm So it looks like our burn player, I saw an idol on, and I think I saw two red-white cards. Yeah, it definitely has a helix in hand. So... I think I would spawn with the idol on, on the stack, so I don't take the two and path. Oh, he's, he's going to take two and path it. Okay. Yeah, he does not want that thing around for his future turns, which is fine, I guess. I, it's, I, I think taking out the uh, swift spear, because then your he's going to be taking two, and you have the uh, displacer, and the rest of angel is a four butt, so you can pretty much have almost. Uh, at, at that specific combat phase. He didn't have enough mana to activate. Well, no, I'm saying, but like now, he, he had the one yeah. white up, so he could have passed the the Swiss Spear, and the next turn just swung with Resto Angel and have the swung with both probably, and actually had the uh, Resto. He could have swung with Resto and Displacer, and then kept the mana up to blink whatever creature was going to try and attack him. Okay, and then use. So with that line of play, you would also allow Eidolon to be working for you. Yes, because like right there, he would have taken four. Mm -hmm. You need to explain those things, Warden. You didn't mention that. Never. Uh, well, he's sorry. Right, so he tapped out to play both Swift Spears, which is a good thing for the DMT player. Um, so, so if he had if he had gone with the other line of play of pathing the Swift Spear with the Eidolon on the stack, uh, he would have killed his opponent this turn. Because he would have taken four for the two Swift Spears. He would have been at five, and he has six flying. Which his opponent cannot interact with. So, Looter Scooter, trigger. Draws a card, discards a card. Um, so I think he's banking on Restoration Angel from hand to be enough to get through combat. That, well, you, I mean, you, you can still activate the... Uh, Displacer, because you can target the rest of Angel, it'll blink itself and come back in. You can target the Displacer to blink it to untap it as well. Does Eldrazi Displacer put uh, the things that it exiles back into play untapped or tapped? It puts it back into play tapped, but the rest of Angel could then target the Displacer to bring it in untapped. Okay, so I would say that is possible, but I don't think that is the best line of play. To do with that. No, but if, if he didn't have the rest, second Restoration Angel in hand, I think that would that would be the line of play he would take. All right. Ooh, he's got a Tarkus Command. That is, that's a pretty darn good card right now. It so, is, but it's not. A, well, it gives plus one, plus one in prowess, so it makes him three fours, which gets rid of the Splicer and just bounces off Resto. Right, but I said I don't think it's enough to kill him. It also deals three damage. Which puts which, him at four, which, which just, opens him up to draw top decking 
I was gonna say topping a white source, but I just looked at his life total. It's at one. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to have an untapped white source next. Correct. Turn. He he has to have a bolt in hand, mm-hmm. or uh, a lava spike or something just to get that last bit of damage through. So like, while the attacker's command is a is a good play, it's just not quite enough. It's pretty rare when you hear that. Right. <laughs> it is. All right. So. I think it's just the math, like, yep, I'm, I'm one point of damage short. <laughs> That's kind of how Death and Taxes, I think, wins these games. Is It's, it's never going to, you're never going to be at a comfortable life total. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm, I'm within bolt range? Okay, top draw it. Burn's Ooh. doing his job right, and yeah, it should be that way every game. Yeah. Uh, Forge Tenders definitely agree bringing in out of DNT. Pro Red and prevent damage from a red source. It's exactly what you want to be doing. Hmm. I'm interested in what the burn deck wants to do. Looks like he's only like he only likes two of his sideboard cards, and none of them are path. Uh, I think uh, I think he brings in skull cracks. That seems great. Great enough. Because uh, that that lets you get around the uh, the protection stuff of. I mean, if I if I see him on a white deck, I'm going to assume at at least core firewalkers or forge tenders. So having a skull crack of saying you can't gain life and damage can't be prevented is a huge thing. Uh, oh, it also looks like he's citing out his Otarka's commands, which it seems fine as seems okay to me. I don't know if that's what you really prefer to be doing. I haven't play tested this matchup, but on the same coin, same side of that coin, uh, it's a more taxing card to play on your mana base, which, yeah. as we saw in our game one, it was a big factor. It was. Uh, the other thing is that, like, uh, Tarkus Command's really good when you can have creatures on the board. Um, and since you since you know you're up against a D&T player, uh, I think the better route is just to try and burn them, burn them down. Okay. That seems pretty reasonable. What did D&T bring in? Uh, Forge Tenders, and uh, I think Firewalkers. That seems really good. Yeah. Your, your, well, your what, standard burn package. <laughs> right. I think I would be bringing in Smash to Smithereens as the burn player. I, I, If you know Death and Taxes well enough, you know that Aether Vial's got to be in the deck, and I don't imagine in any matchup you're taking out Aether Vial in a D&T deck. No. Uh, also, your other target is a Blade Spicer Is Golem. the Golems, yeah. Which... He spent a full card on to get rid of, and like bringing in smash the smithereens, mono red, kill an artifact, deal three damage. That's yeah. the reach that. That's the kind of tempo play that you want. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, see a land a rift bolt a lava spike. Oh, also they're burning the three bit inspectors, so you could blow up clues. <laughs> get that extra damage in there when they tap down. It's like bam, take three. <laughs> Thanks, three bit inspector. <laughs> I, th- I think Birds is going to keep... I see one land, a Lava Spike, a Rift Bull. I'm pretty sure you see those three cards. Like, I don't care what else is in the hand. I'm going to keep. <laughs> yes, uh, the famous meme of Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> if you have an opening hand with one land and think to yourself, I got this, you might be a red deck. Uh, probably. Or Char ah! Belter. <laughs> <laughs> or what? Or Char Belter. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> No balls. Play the zero land version. You, you mean oops all spells? No. <laughs> How does that work? If you don't have the land, you just fill it, flip your whole deck, and it's like I'm going to keep flipping over these imaginary cards. Well, yeah, you you flip until you can no longer flip cards, and then it counts and, and it stops counts. and counts. It stops. See, yeah. there you go. It's perfect. No lands. Don't have to worry about it. All right, we had turn one lava spike after a fetch, it's getting sacred foundry, and then we got our Thraven Inspector, which ooh. is ooh beautiful play. Yeah, it was getting that extra damage in there. Yeah, one mana three damage, two mana three damage. Next turn three mana six damage. <laughs> so some so ball lightning. Oh Thalia, that's a really good one to get right All now. All right, let's get another staring blaze going. Hit your hit your third land drop. Hopefully, never have to hit a land drop ever again. And then. Uh, <laughs> He wants that end of play tapped. Alright. So that tells us he has no bolts. 
Well, even if he did, he couldn't he cast a crystal. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> that tells us he's playing well. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little bit. So. All right. Well, looking for something to do to better his position, he cracks the clue, plays another Raven Inspector to try to get uh, more cards, and takes two damage. Or for plays it. a Raven Inspector to get more cards. I guess it is another one. That's the uh, first yeah. one died. Right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yes. See, so perfect opening to get that smash to smithereens. <laughs> Take away his card advantage. Oh. And deal three damage. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, the, unfortunately, the first third inspector did go out in a blaze of glory. A blaze. <laughs> uh, ooh, second Eidolon actually... That Thraben inspector was inspected to be at 165 degrees. 420 blaze it. No. <laughs> so two mana bolt. Yep. Ah. Yeah, it's just funny. It turns cards into lightning strike. <laughs> Which you're still okay with casting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you block with the. No. Okay. Just all right. So I guess he's saving the Thraven for a bigger threat, possibly uh, monsters with spears with cross triggers on him. Which I think is fine. I'm popular. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, what is that card in his hand? It's, it's, a, it's like a helix, someone that we can oh, easily see. Oh, okay. Um, I just can't see a Johnny very well from that angle. Oh. It just looked like a war. You know. <laughs> it looked like a logic nut. For those of you who. Who know? I uh, Dragon Ball Z kind of reminded me of Piccolo's. Oh, his, his super beam or whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get comments down below like it's actually this. Like, All right. And then I'll say thank you because <laughs> I don't remember and uh, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on in the game? Enough about Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I was like, oh, I mean. So with the mono white deck, you see four mana up, and they say pass. I immediately think Resto Angel, which yes. we can immediately see that he has. Might as well make him do it. Yeah. Get another clue. Yep. Yeah. Declare a block. So Helix the Angel. Game so. one. Yep, and then trade. Yes. Okay, I mean that seems fine. Yeah, I, it seems fine for both players. You get rid of a good threat, and then. The other guy's just thinking, hey, I just got a two-for-one. Yeah. <laughs> Both Whoa. players are kind of okay with that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fetching, 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 fetching. I guess you wouldn't get stomping grounds since you cited out them. Uh, those are Tarka's commands, and you did not bring in any destructor, destructive revelries. So yeah. that is a very low priority. Just making sure you got that white mana. <laughs> yep. Um, I think he's set up for a Boris Charm or an additional Lightning Helix. Two turn, two cards in one turn. Bat. Yeah. Bat. Uh, I mean, ideally, like... Oh, additional Eidolon. All right. Just Might as well. T tax the D&T player to death. I like it. <laughs> Way to beat him out of his own game. Oof. Tax oh, in man. the taxer. Uh, your opponent's t he's so Burns tapped out and he has an arbiter in hand, with uh. And four lands, his opponent has four lands. Oh, why would you not put the arbiter down first? Oops. Now let's see what he wants to do. Oh no. Because like tap the a planes and the tectonic edge is like I can blow up two of your land. I can blow up both of your white sources and force you he on top drop. Not Go find. He did not get a a mountain. So I'm guessing the rest of his lands are burn or fetches. Two basics. Wow. That's a very important piece of information. Yes, it is. Because that makes his ghost quarters that much better. Yes. He's at eight. I don't know what he has in hand. Uh, I think he has a land. Yeah, they spell. Looks like Wood of Foothills. Rift Bolt! Suspend a Rift Bolt. Alright. 
Uh, oh, he didn't play the the Leon Arbiter first because he valued the two damage over. Over. Uh, I mean, okay, I I can I can that. see that. I just put that together right. Yeah, now. I was like, yeah, cause then he'd be down to six, and that's in double bolt range. Okay, that that, that that makes sense. Stack for five. So draw, discard. I think I think discard the tectonic edge is fine. At this point, yes, because only one tectonic edge is going to really do work for you, I think. Yeah. Uh, discards the ghost to prison, which, I mean, I think that's fine. His opponent is going to be winning by throwing stuff at his face yes. at this point. Maybe sneakily getting in. Hey, that turn 7 8th or vile. Clutch. <laughs> All right. I think it's two land in hand. It is. Sacred oh, no. Aired Mesa. And he has three... He has five damage on the board currently. So, I mean... He's not dead yet. He's not dead yet, but I don't... Yeah, I was like... He's he, not going to say... The one card's not going to deal exactly. five damage. Oh. That's where so, he's at. So, D&T and two. Well played, gentlemen. Well yep. played. Oh, are they going to give us a, a sneak peek at their sideboarding strategies? Looks like it. Looks like he did bring the start of rivalry. Oh. Did he? Right there. Oh. Okay, well, there it is. Hey. I did not catch that. I think that's what he, uh, he probably swapped the Tarkus commands for those. And then Skull Cracks, yeah. Yeah, that seems pretty good. All right. All right. I cool. love Red Alert, Ghost, Ghost City Prison. Okay, yeah, and then the Forge Tenders for the D&T deck. All right, cool. yeah, those both seem fine. Thanks for the sneak peek, guys. <laughs> See you next time.